Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Mark Thompson of Talga Resources. How are you today, Mark? Good, thanks, Tracy. And of course, Mark, the reason why I'm so excited about talking to you is I, and I don't say this very often to the Investor Intel audience, but I do believe we have one of the most undervalued stocks currently on the market. So we have a lot of questions to talk to you about with both graphite and graphene today. Are you ready? Go for it. Okay, first of all, I'd like to start by doing something I never do, which is to actually read a quote that I read in your shareholders letter from your uh, chairman, Keith Coughlin. He wrote in a recently published letter, the company has made great strides towards our ultimate goal of becoming a global scale producer of graphite and graphene. As a result, we are strategically placed to play a growing role in the emerging trend towards low emission energy production and storage via devices such as batteries and fuel cells, conductive coatings, and a host of technology applications that require advanced materials. I would love it if you would just start by reintroducing Talga to our audience and understand why that's not just a visionary statement, but that's really what Talga is trying and is achieving. Yeah, that's, that, at the root of that is that the world has a lot of problems. It's got a lot of resource pressure and a lot of pollution pressure, and it's trying to fix those problems. And one of the ways around that is to positively change energy storage and energy mobility and energy generation. Uh, graphite being a crystalline form of carbon is at the heart of a lot of those technologies and we own the world's highest grade resource of graphite under JORC or NI43 conditions. So we're taking advantage of that and trying to work out strategically how to um, use that resource to the betterment of all these sorts of products that people read about in the media but then don't enter into their lives uh, for a little while but similar to plastics and carbon fibre before it, uh, some of these companies go on to become global leaders and that's where Talgir is heading. Well, and I think something that I would love for you to explain to our audience is you really differentiate yourself, your competitive advantages. You're going after some very unique niche, well, I don't know how niche an $11 billion plus corrosion protect, protection sector is, but if you can talk about these different sectors that you're going after uh, to really uh, give you a heads up. Sure. We were quite an early mover into the graphene space, I guess, as part of the, the graphite sector. And what we found is that there's an industry that's 40 times bigger than the entire global graphite market, and that's the total volume of material used for paints and coatings. And graphene, one of the, the largest volume applications with really good margins and really good speed to market in its development, is in the coating sector. So uh, we've got uh, a chief technology officer, Dr. Shiva Bohm, who has over 25 patents and uh, over 100 technical papers in his 25-year career. He's a coding specialist, and he's now, as our CTO, uh, basically constructing products made of our graphene uh, to um, license and look for revenues from uh, royalties and, and production, obviously, that feeds into our raw materials. So we see the coatings as, a, I guess, not a media darling compared to roll-up TV screens and uh, things like electric planes, but it's actually a very good, solid move because it only involves replacing incumbent materials like zinc and zircon uh, rather than creating entirely new uh, technologies. So that's just one, one part of the four main sectors we focus on. And of course, I mean, something that is sizzling to our audience is the battery storage market. Can you tell us what your involvement is in that particular sector? Yeah, we've got a two-pronged approach to that. So first of all, uh, as an anode material, graphite uh, obviously is already currently used, so demand for that sort of material is going up. What we're looking for is a real advantage in that. So what we're doing is making material without spheronizing and without some of the processing that other companies have to do, and we're just putting that straight into the battery anode. Recent work at the Energy Innovation Centre at the University of Warwick has shown that we can get similar performance but at a potentially lower cost because we have less processing steps. So that's anode materials. And the second part is graphene for the additives. So we're looking at very highly conductive additives to mix into current materials, which is also a lower hurdle than creating entirely new materials. So the graphene is more, more as an additive, and we're using our, our bulk graphite with less processing steps being used in a, in a unique way directly without some of the steps that other companies have. Because, Tracy, you know lithium-ion batteries are still fairly expensive. So even though the price has come down quite a lot since that technology has taken off, the curve is flattening. The actual rate of decrease of cost is flattened. And so you're only getting incremental changes, whereas Talga is trying to be at the forefront of some major leaps in changing that economy to do with lithium-ion batteries. So um, we sort of have got both, both bases covered on that, we think. 
And of course, you just recently announced uh, phase two for your graphene uh, pilot test plant was successfully commissioned. Yeah. And I noticed uh, something that was interesting to me. Not only do you have a high quality graphene output, but you've got approximately 76% of your graphite is being converted to graphene. That seems really high to me. Is that is that high, Mark? Or explain this to, to us. Well, it's... It's high compared to our scoping study. In our scoping study, it was the first, as far as we know, the first public uh, document that really put labels on pricing on graphene and graphene production costs. And I think, to be conservative, we used about 2% uh, conversion of the graphite into graphene. And that was because the net present value on the project was already close to half a billion dollars at that rate. Uh, what we found, of course, that was about nearly two years ago now. And one year ago, we built our pilot plant. The phase two is a significant expansion of that. We've got nearly 15 people working in Germany and about 20 now across the group in four countries. And the result of that work is that we've increased that, yeah, that conversion rate to 76%. Um, we think it's early days. We can still optimise that even higher. And it also means, therefore, we can provide a lot larger volumes uh, of, of graphene in future compared to what was in the, the scoping study uh, nearly two years ago. So, Mark, I, I know you're you're traveling a lot. You're a very hard person to get a hold of. I know you're quite a workaholic too. Can you tell me uh, what we as shareholders should anticipate in say the next couple of quarters? <laughs> two quarters. <laughs> if you look at the last quarter, you'll see uh, uh, quite a bit going on. The next the next two quarters will be uh, a big focus on the commercial side, on the companies we're currently working with that are testing our products. So you'll get results of those tests. There'll be a selection of of layers of scientific validation commercial validation and, and deals with, with companies on some of these products. Uh, that'll be sort of the main breakthroughs, plus, of course, individual products that we develop in those in those sectors. Uh, I guess we hear that a lot of people are waiting for Telga to do a deal with someone. The companies we work with are usually top five or six in the world. Uh, they're a bit slower to come along, but the deals are very substantial uh, when you can nail them. So that's what we're focusing on and over the next couple of quarters, I would say that would be the main things to look out for. We have done some exploration drilling recently, so there'll be a resource, or we're looking to, to make a resource upgrade at, at our flagship project at Vitengi in northern Sweden. Um, that is already the highest grade resource in the world, but we're looking to increase the amount of indicated material for future studies. And uh, some of the results of that work and the exploration we've been doing in conjunction with the products should be things to look out for in the next couple of quarters. Well, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure, Tracy. Cheers.